everybody. It's great to see everyone saying hi in the chat and we'd encourage you to continue doing that. Say hello, get familiar with the Demio space that we have today. The chat will be our main feature to communicate and to ask questions. So it's good to, uh, to start practicing early on. So good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Wellness Wednesday webinar with Health Promotion. Today, we will be joined by Janique Sir, counselor at the Sexual Misconduct Response Center. And my name is Rachel Askett, and I'm a health promotion specialist here in Kingston. So today we'll be discussing resources and support that the SMRC or the Sexual Misconduct Response Center offers. Many of us are likely aware of ongoing investigations involving high-ranking CAF members. While health promotion aims to be a support during and following the outcomes of the investigations, we don't have the ability to comment on the specific cases. However, we will be discussing those supports and the resources that are available regarding sexual misconduct. For some, this may bring up past or current feelings of distress. So please take care and we'd encourage you to download the key resource card that will be provided here. So as I just launched that resource and that handout for you, um, I would just let you know that this is a local Kingston resource. Most of the information or a bulk of the information is, is local here to Kingston. However, there are some national numbers on it as well, which is very helpful. I would point out the map number as well as the SMRC, of course, which will get more details on how to reach them as a support and, and how to access their services. So those are two great resources to keep top of mind um, in case those feelings of distress or pain do, do arise at any time. So we'd ask that you prioritize your, your own wellness and your self-care throughout the webinar. So with that, let's start today with an act of self-care and, and a bit of relaxation. So I'd ask you to take a moment before we begin to just reflect on what you need to be comfortable today and to be comfortable in this moment. Maybe you just need a few deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. Maybe this morning was a little hectic and you just need to slow it down for a moment. It could be a little stretch, maybe you're feeling tight in your shoulders and you just need to move around for a moment and maybe you haven't given yourself the chance to do that yet. Or maybe you just need a glass of water before you begin the day because you rushed over to your computer because it was 8.30. So take that time to grab that glass of water, to stretch, to take a deep breath and to get comfortable. Now, as you get comfortable, we'll go over some of the housekeeping details for the webinar today. Now to ask a question today, I'd encourage you to enter your questions in the chat, which is to the right of your screen, which I see um, we're all getting familiar with already. This will be our, our, main, um, our main method of asking questions throughout the webinar today, and we'd encourage you to ask lots of questions. This is your opportunity. We'll try to answer the questions throughout the webinar as you know it's, it's on subject or um, if it's in the context of what we're talking about. But if we miss any, we'll be sure to answer them at the end. Health Promotion Specialist Jeremy Bauman Fortin is in the chat today to help people with any technical issues you might be having. Um, so feel free to ask any technical questions in the chat and Jeremy will be there to support um, and he'll be helping us make sure we answer all those questions that you asked throughout the webinar at the end of the day. So hi, Jer, thanks for helping. If you're noticing a slow or interrupted connection, we all know that is common with webinars, please just place an X in the chat and then we'll know to either turn off our video stream or to slow down and let the connection catch up. While the bulk of the presentation will be in English today, both Janique and Jeremy are able to take in and answer questions in French. There will be a complete French language recording created and provided on the Kingston webinar library link, which will be available next week. That will be sent out to all participants um, and the link to 
our uh, health promotion programs is here so you can check out and access uh, upcoming webinars as well as the recorded webinars at this link here. So you can click on that and you can bookmark it and you will always know where you can go to register for future Wellness Wednesday webinars um, as well as other virtual programming and recorded materials as well. I'll be providing this link at the end of the webinar today as well. So before we get started, I would just like to say that the presentation is the intellectual property of the Department of National Defense. So we would discourage um, and forbid any reproduction or transmission of the slides or the recording today. This presentation is being recorded, um, so you will have access to the information and the slides. However, the only thing that's being recorded is the video, the sound, and the slides. So the chat and the polls, they're not in the recording. For those who may be viewing this as a recording in the future, welcome and thank you for accessing this material. We'll be making sure that we read out some of the questions in the, in the chat so that you have context for what's going on in the chat, but uh, there won't be any identifying factors there. So some of the topics discussed in the webinar today are or could be of a sensitive nature and not appropriate for children. So we would ask for parental discretions. There may be little ears around as we all work from home. Um, so please keep that in mind. Please understand that people's stories are theirs alone to tell. So anything shared by participants in this webinar and in the chat is not to be discussed outside of the webinar in order to main maintain that confidentiality. Again, the webinar is being recorded and will be available for viewing later on calfconnection.ca and at that link that I just provided you as well. I would also like to highlight those programs and those virtual health promotion programs that we have uh, on offer right now. So across all four of our pillars, we've been getting as creative as possible here in Kingston to make sure that we're still able to provide that information to CAF members, their family members, veterans, and civilian staff throughout um, the current lockdown situation in Ontario. So some of those programs include our Mind Muscle program, which is featuring uh, some relaxation on Mondays at noon, uh, individualized program, a 21-day challenge, and Mindful Minutes, the first webinar, the first Wellness Wednesday webinar of every month. So we've been enjoying that mindfulness time as well as a reset program, which features content from all four of the health promotion pillars, addiction awareness, social wellness, nutritional wellness, and active living, which will begin on the 4th of May. And of course, we have our Wellness Wednesday webinars as well. So we look forward to seeing you in our other virtual programs. Uh, to start off today, we have a poll to begin. So. I would just ask you to select whatever group um, best represents you. So that poll should be live, should see a green button um, next to the chat, so you can select the answer that best suits you. Amazing. So if you can't find that poll feature yet, it is kind of just next to the tab on the chat, so you can toggle from chat to polls to handouts there. Um, so if you weren't able to download that key resource card handout, that would be in the handouts as well. Awesome. So it looks like we're split mostly um, NPF civilian staff or DND staff, so some support there, and some regular force members as well. So welcome everyone, and we'll try to make sure that the content is as relevant to you as possible. The next question is, um, where you're joining us from. So we'd just like to know if you're joining us locally here in Kingston or if you're outside of Kingston. And I forgot a B in that last section. There's always one spelling mistake, right? Amazing. Thanks for your answers, everybody. Now, the second question is related to, or the third question is related to the content today. So have you ever heard of the SMRC? And that poll should be live now. Have you heard of it? 
yes, but you're not really sure what it is. You've heard the acronym before, right? But you're not really sure what it means or no, you've never heard of it before. Great, so it's awesome that most people have heard of the SMRC. Some of us have heard of it, but we're not really sure what it is. So hopefully that will give you some clarification today. And one person will be newly introduced to the SMRC. So that is great. So whether you've heard of the SMRC or not, this is the opportunity to ask the questions that you need to maybe clarify the services um, that you've used in the past or, or you're familiar with the SMRC is providing. Maybe you'll learn about new services that they have or to begin familiarizing yourself with the SMRC if you've never heard of them before. Now I'd like to officially welcome Janique to turn her camera and microphone on as we begin the webinar. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Thank you. So Janique, can you introduce yourself, your role at the SMRC, and your background in the field? Absolutely. Begin? So my name is Janique, and I use the pronouns she, her, and L. I've been at the SMRC for almost a year and a half, and I have, uh, I'm a counselor at the SMRC, and I have over probably a good 12 years experience just supporting families, whether that's adults and children who have experienced different forms of abuse or neglect in different capacities. So I'm very well versed in dealing with a lot of different types of issues. And I focused more on the sex, sexual misconduct aspect, more specifically since my role at the SMRC. Amazing. Thank you. So in your role at the SMRC, what are some of the services that you and the, and the team of counselors provide? So we do offer a 24 seven line. It's a bilingual service, so in English or French. Um, and that line is really to be able to offer support primarily to community armed forces members who have been affected by sexual misconduct. However, um, we do have civilians who call the line and we will never turn anybody away. So we do have access to resources and information to provide to anybody who would call our line. And the purpose is really to ensure that we're meeting their individual needs. Um, so if it's offering supportive counseling, we might be providing information on uh, resources or referrals. We also have a military liaison team at the SMRC. So we're really grateful to have our military police liaison officer who we can facilitate access if you are looking for information more information on the investigative process, reporting mechanisms, just really understanding what that would look like for you. And you can speak to them anonymously if that was your choice. And we also have our military liaison officer, and he's very well versed in terms of policies and procedures within the Canadian Armed Forces as it pertains to sexual misconduct. So if ever a chain of command needs some uh, information on resources or what to do next steps, or even an affected person that's not sure if the the proper procedures are being followed, he can kind of shed some light on that and look into those things with the client's consent. Um, another thing that we can offer is that we have our response and support coordination program. So right now that's specifically offered to Canadian Armed Forces members currently serving who have been affected by sexual misconduct, but that's an ongoing coordinator who would be there to support you according to your individual needs. So that could be that you might need some supportive counseling on a regular basis. Um, the check-ins are really scheduled according to the client's needs. So it could be once a week, multiple times a week, once a month, whatever you might need. Uh, they can offer accompaniment. They can do referrals to different resources or programs or get information for you. Um, they also can be kind of like the link between you and the chain of command with your explicit consent. Again, it's absolutely person-centered and will be according to what the client needs. Um, yeah, so in terms of, of like the counselor component, that's really what our 24-7 line can offer. That's amazing. So many things wrapped up into one phone number, and that phone number is on the screen right now, as well as the email. So you could contact the SMRC both ways. And kind of what I heard was there like maybe four main things that, that you provide, like the counseling, the military police liaison officer, 
the military liaison officer, and then it was the as the support program. Yes, the response and support like, coordination program. But at the end of at, at the end of the day, like we do supportive counseling, right? So we don't do any kind of therapy. Um, we'll also do uh, like risk assessments. So if ever somebody's in crisis, then we're going to be sure to do the full risk assessment with them to ensure that they're feeling safe. Um, come up with strategies, self-care uh, plans, anything that the client might need to just be in a better space following the call. And then, of course, it's just providing information. So any information that they may need to make an informed choice moving forward or just even to process whatever they're going through. Um, so that's really our role. We, we really let the client take control of that conversation and we're there to support them for as long as they need during that call there's like no time limit we'll really take the time that's necessary to be able to support that individual based on whatever they need in that moment those are really all comforting details to know as someone who you know, may need to call the line in the future may feel the need right now to call the line um, or just looking for that leadership support too so thank you for that information the next question we kind of have, it might see, seem obvious, but we're going to kind of bring it back a bit. Why does the SMRC exist? Why are you providing all of these programs now specifically to the CAP? Yes. So, well, so we've been in place since 2015. So that was following the Marie Deschamps report that was highly recommending that there be an independent agency to provide support to Canadian Armed Forces members, specifically so that um, members can come forward, talk about their experiences without triggering a formal complaint process so that they can really receive the information that's needed to make an informed choice as to whether or not they'd like to proceed in, and move forward with a formal complaint. Um, and then also there was recognition that the CAF as a whole needed a little bit more expertise. So we're the center of expertise for sexual misconduct to be able to assist the chain of command, assist with any policies and procedures, assist directly affected members. So we were really that portal to be able to provide that guidance depending on who's calling. Um, so that's really why we exist is to really be that, um, that organization that specializes in sexual misconduct within the Canadian Armed Forces, because as we know, there can be um, like just specific things that you might need to be mindful of uh, that you wouldn't necessarily have to consider for the civilian members, uh, specifically in the forces, everybody is in a unit or they're, they're closely related together. So those are all things that we're aware of to offer the best support possible. So that's really why we exist, is to be able to be independent from the chain of command to provide resources and information to anybody that calls in and kind of go from there. Amazing. So when you call the line, is it always going to be like, obviously we're meeting you today, so that's great to put a face to that number, but who else is on the other side of the so line? So we currently have seven counselors. We're all civilian. Uh, you could have a male or female counselor. Um, but we've all been like, we're all professionals. We've all been trained to be able to offer the proper information and resources to anybody who calls in. Uh, and also, if we don't know, we will say that we need to look into information for you and can get back to you with your consent. So you're just going to be, again, you will call the line. You'll have like a general message asking you to choose a French or English. Each counselor is fully bilingual. So you'll be able to speak to them in the language of your choice. Um, and it's just going to be somebody else similar to me who's there to offer you that support. And again, that won't trigger that formal complaint process. So we have a question in the chat, just wondering what kind of training do the counselors receive? <laughs> we receive, we do a lot of different types of training. Um, so anything related to the CAF, so to get, if ever, um, counselors aren't necessarily familiar with the Canadian Armed Forces if they're coming in from a, a different area. So you'll we'll get a lot of training about the Canadian Armed Forces, a lot of training on um, like neurobiology of sexual trauma. Uh, it's an ongoing process. We're constantly uh, looking at webinars. Uh, we've done like the assist suicide training to be able to do suicide risk assessments. Um, male uh, military sexual trauma or just male sexual trauma to be more informed to to really have the resources necessary to serve our clients. 
like a whole range, anything that has to do with sexual trauma, we're usually going to be uh, reading, taking a webinar or doing a training. And then anything from a military component as well, we're going to be doing right from the start of our position as a counselor and on an ongoing basis to ensure that we stay completely informed about the different resources and tools that are available for, for people calling in. I hope, I hope that answered the question. I hope so too, but if it didn't, you can you can ask another one in the chat as well. But that's great. It's great to hear of how diverse your training is as well. Um, let me just, yes, thank you. Awesome. So how can a caller be sure that their confidentiality is maintained when they're contacting the SMRC? So it is completely confidential according to the legal limits. So automatically, as soon as you're going to have that live counselor on the call, um, either immediately or depending how that conversation is going, uh, we're automatically going to let you know that all calls that are coming in through the SMRC, they're documented in a protected V environment, that we do follow the confidentiality policy according to the Privacy Act, but that there are limits. And those limits are if ever the client was to disclose that either themselves or someone else is at risk of harm, if a child is at risk of abuse or neglect, or lastly, if the court subpoenaed our documents, those could be instances where there could be a breach of confidentiality. So with that being said, the caller has like the power when they're on the line. We're not forcing them to give us a name. We will ask if they'd like to provide their name, if they feel comfortable. Um, they can remain anonymous throughout the whole call. They can provide an alias. They can give us just a first name, like whatever they, they choose. We will never be pushy on that. The only time you'll be required to provide your full name as well as some identifying information for sure would be for a referral to the response and support coordination program. And the reason for that is that the coordinators are assigned per um, like location as well just to ensure that they're able to look up resources ahead of time prior to your contact so that they can best serve you. So that's one of the reasons. But it's at no point are you do you have to give that identifying information. You can remain anonymous. We will ask you questions uh, either at the beginning of the call or normally at the end of the call, and literally for st statistical purposes. So, are you are you a CAF member or are you civilian? Um, if you are a CAF member, we're going to ask, are you Reg Force, Reserve Force? Uh, we might ask, are you Army, Navy, or Air Force? Those kinds of statistics, literally just to assist our center in knowing who's calling in, what is the need, do we need to do more outreach in certain areas, so that's the reason that we're collecting that information, not for the purpose of identifying who you are as, a, as an individual. And also note that our notes in our case management system are very limited, so we're not putting full details of your story, again, to maintain that confidentiality. Mm -hmm. So a follow-up question to that in the chat is, so how does duty to report work if there's no name given? So we don't have, so as the SMRC, we do not have a duty to report. So that's the one thing why the SMRC exists is that members can come forward and talk to us where it doesn't trigger that duty to report. We will provide, you don't have to give us the name, you don't have to give us the perpetrator's name. Um, we're not an investigative body, so what we can do is assist you with informing you about your reporting options and facilitate access to those reporting mechanisms so that it's really you have that power, you have that choice. When you're calling us, it's not nothing's being triggered at that, compo at that point, right? So it's important for you to know that. And if you want information on reporting mechanisms, then we'll facilitate access for you, either to military police, the Canadian Forces National Investigative Services, and sometimes even civilian police. So be able to give you that information so you know exactly what to expect, you know exactly what your rights are as an affected person, and that you can make that choice whether you want to move forward or not. Great. I hope that answered your question um, and it helps cover the questions we had later on in the webinar too. So yeah, the SMRC does not have that duty to report. Thanks for the question. Um, so what types of calls do you typically get at the SMRC? Is it always people seeking um, support for themselves or 
Are there different calls? We get a lot of different calls. So affected members or affected persons are definitely the number one call that we get for people just needing some support or information um, or referrals. Then chain of command would probably be the next up where they're just uh, needing some information on how they can support a member who's come forward with a disclosure, as well as just verifying that they're following all proper procedures um, when they do receive a disclosure. And then we also have third parties, right? So whether that's a family member, a friend, it could be a bystander who witnessed something, they need to talk about it. Excuse me, they don't know about their duty to report or how can they support that member. Um, and then sometimes we have just information seekers where they're not calling about a specific situation, but that they're asking general information as it pertains to sexual misconduct. So those are those would be the range of different types of calls. And people can call us for all types of sexual misconduct, right? So we deal with anything all over the spectrum from, you know, inappropriate sexualized jokes all the way to sexual assault. So could civilians call the SMRC as Absolutely. well? Absolutely. So as I mentioned earlier, we will never turn anybody away. We have civilians who call and they usually call because they're related in some way to the to the Canadian Armed Forces. So whether the, per, the alleged perpetrator is in the CAF or they're a spouse or right, they work at DND, um, anything like that. So we have more resources for Canadian Armed Forces members, but we also have resources and referrals that we can provide civilian members. Um, so there's definitely information and resources that's available to us as counselors that we can provide members. And if we're not sure, we'll definitely let you know and guide you towards the best resource to answer your questions if uh, we don't have access to that immediately. I think it's really great to emphasize that point you, you mentioned about the information seekers or you know the chain of command calling in to make sure that you know they're they're going through a disclosure appropriately or um, you know they're just looking for that leadership support as well um, those are all really great ways to access the smrc as, as a resource and uh, can really help us all stay on track because we're not you know like you just said you're always training right and always learning and same goes for leaders and, and support within the CAF too. So using each other, it's perfect. Um, Absolutely. The next and it's, question, it's nice talking and a lot about oh. calling the number. Oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. We had a mismatch of connection there. <laughs> okay, you're cutting out a little bit, Rachel, just so you know. <laughs> I hope, but I don't know if it's just for me. So I was just saying that it's a difficult subject, right? So anybody who's who's dealing with any emotions or thoughts uh, about anything related to sexual misconduct and you need to chat, just give us a call. Like we're there for you, we're there to support you. Uh, even if it's just that you need to vent about something, we're happy to be that person um, to just walk you through that process, right? If that's gonna make you feel better, then give us a call and we can refer you elsewhere if that's what's necessary, but otherwise don't sit alone with this. It is definitely difficult and we're there for you specifically for that purpose. Exactly. So we're talking a lot about calling in. Um, are there other ways that people could access support other than calling the number that we see on the screen? Uh, so the other way to access like a counselor would be through our email. Um, which is also listed on the screen here, but our emails are monitored from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, during business days. So if you were to send an email during a weekend, it would have to wait to the next business day. So if ever it's it, you're in crisis or it's something that you would really like an answer to quickly, then call our line because our line is 24 seven. Um, You'll normally get a counselor directly on the line, specifically during business day. The only time where potentially you might have to leave a message or a callback number is if you call after hours. Currently, we only have one counselor that's on call after hours. So if by chance you're calling when they're already on a call with another client, then obviously that will prompt for you to leave a voicemail or a callback number and then they will call you back as soon as their call ends and they're available. So just wanted to explain that because that would be the one time where that could happen. Okay. And um, through the through the Respect in the CAF app, 
Um, I think those services are also linked there as well. So um, that would be something that could be worth downloading for, for people as well, um, is the Respect in the CAF app. Um, it's available, I think, I'm, yeah, on Android and, uh, and iOS. Yes. Um, so that could be something in your pocket that you have. You always have the phone number or the email to the SMRC. So can I, we've talked about it a little bit, but just to clarify, can someone um, accessing the SMRC make an official report through the SMRC? So as I mentioned earlier, we're not an investigative body, but we can facilitate access to a reporting mechanism. So um, we, like, we wouldn't go through that whole investigation process. And in order to make that formal complaint, it has to be to an investigative body. So we can easily do a call transfer to the investigative body that can so that they can make that formal complaint um or just give them the number so that they can call when they're ready like it, it's whatever they need at that point in time and we'll support them in that process uh, but we won't take officially the formal complaints and again it's we're that in between right so that they can call us that it won't trigger a formal complaint process uh, and that we can just literally give them information so they can make that informed decision if then they want to move forward and proceed with that formal complaint that's a great clarification again that the smrc is separate from the chain of command and that's where it's the the real value is as well when it's still um, you know information specific to and and to support CAF members so we have one more question as we're nearing the end of the webinar. So if you do have additional questions that haven't been asked yet, I'd encourage you to ask them in the chat and then we can come back to them in just a moment. Um, but our last question from Health Promotion is how does the SMRC support the Respect in the CAF program, which is facilitated by Health Promotion across uh, Canada? Mm -hmm. So at the SMRC, we have an education and training team that actually uh, was part of developing and implementing the Respect in the CAF program as well as the app. So they actually were responsible for training um, the health promotion team staff across Canada so that you would be facilitators to then take this on. So they're always available to be able to assist you if there's anything that needs to be changed to the program, if you're needing some support with the resources or the documents that you're using during training. They, that's what they're there for. They're there to support you through that process so that you can continue to deliver this training. And of course, it's important for us to be aware of any changes that are coming up. Sometimes, you know, comments will be made during the trainings, which the health promotion team can kind of chat with our education and training team to see how it can uh, be improved to better serve the clients as they're, they're receiving this training. Perfect. And if you haven't heard of the Respect in the CAF program before, um, we would encourage you to seek that out once we're back to in-person training. It's a great one-day program, again, provided all across Canada um, by health promotion facilitators, and the content is created again by the SMRC. Um, so we hope to see you in a, a course coming up once we're all back in in person and, and seeing each other in the in the classroom and the training spaces. Um, so again, if you have any other questions, now would be the time to um, ask Janik. Uh, we do have additional resources highlighted here. So again, if you would like any posters mm -hmm. or promotional materials from the SMRC, the email is on the screen here. Um, I also have a direct link that I'll provide. I'll just launch that now. Um, and of course, the handout that we all provided, um, uh, the key resource card local to Kingston here, but that also has national numbers as well. Um, the screenshots are a screenshot of the Respect in the CAF app, so where you can find it to, to download, um, as well as the screenshot in the app where you can see resources. So it's actually geo-specific. Um, you would be able to see both civilian and um, the SMRC resources in your area. And that's really, uh, really unique and, and important, an important feature in this app as well. Um, so our last poll for the day 
Um, you can still feel free to ask questions if they're coming up, but we would just ask if you could complete this poll. If the information presented today um, is applicable to your daily life, did you find it useful? Did you find the information helpful? And again, we encourage people to reach out to the resources here if that feeling of distress comes up for you after this webinar. Your health and your well being are very important, and there are teams of people ready and willing to support you. So, again, you can access those numbers through that key resource card handout. Um, so, if you haven't already downloaded that, feel free. Um, by contacting Shinik at the SMRC um, through those emails we already provided, and uh, of course through health promotion as well. Um, you can also register for our next Wellness Wednesday webinar coming up. That will be with Jackie. Listen to understand and not respond. So that is something that is very helpful in that leadership context, especially, uh, you know, potentially when it comes to disclosures. So really having that ear for empathy um, and for taking that that backseat and letting that support truly be person centered. So you can find the registration link on the uh, the button that's live on your screen now. So I'd just like to say a true thank you to Janik and the SMRC team for joining us today. The information is invaluable and a really important clarification for all of us um, as we're distanced and you know maybe feeling a little far from resources right now. Um, but it's a great reminder that the resources are still close and still working for for us, right? For everyone. So thank you. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure to be here today. And thank you everyone for joining us. Take care and we'll see you next week.